Well, good morning and a beautiful tropical morning from the Caribbean side of the small isthmus country of Panama. I am 38 kilometers from Cologne, which is the Atlantic outlet or inlet for the Panama Canal. But I have come specifically to Portobello and Portobello was named in 1502 for Chris, by Christopher Columbus on his fourth trip over to the Americas. He named it Felipe de Portobello for the King of Spain at that time. And this for over 200 years became the most important port for all of South America and arguably the most important port in the world. Now, how does one make such a huge claim to that? Well, right up behind me in this dense jungle was the Camino Real or the Camino de Cruces. Camino Real is where all of that silver, all of that wealth uh, from what was Peru at that time, but as Bolivia de Potosí was extracted, was then brought up by ship from Lima to old Panama. It was walked to cross the peninsula, about 50 miles, about 80 kilometers, loaded into galleons here and shipped off to Europe. This changed the world as we know it today. And in many ways, we could say changed it for the worse. 14 galleons went over, caused massive inflation in Spain, uh, and then led, of course, to the establishment of enslavement, the imposition, of course, of the church into this part of the world. And for over 250 years, Spanish soldiers would stand here and defend this fort from the legal pirates of the British and French empires. Sir Francis Drake, I'm sure you've heard his name before, actually died of yellow fever out in an island there. And the Camino Real, the walk across the peninsula, is better known as the Walk of Crosses because so many thousands died, generally from yellow fever and malaria. All that said, these forts here became the center of the Spanish mercantile system. It also became a place to receive enslaved people. And there's an extra note about that in this small community here. Because up behind me is their beautiful church, first established in 1596. But of course the city was burnt to the ground by both Francis Drake and Henry Morgan. This one we see is about 1814, but inside that incredible church is actually one of the best known uh, Jesuses of color, or black Jesus, which is quite significant. And it is a beautiful, building of course and it has become within this culture around here in the afro panamanian culture a place of uh, a place of pilgrimage and knowledge you will also notice of course as it's the caribbean much of the rock that's built into this board here has all been done with corals but there are the canyons now gentlemen are out um cleaning the, the lawn out there which is lovely so i'm standing back here for the noise a little bit look at the old spanish canyons these would have actually seen battles and so for usually a month to two months every year there would be a center of trade in through here the Spanish galleons would come in and then would be loaded up and sail off to Spain many of them sunk in the Caribbean I would encourage you to look up one of the wonderful YouTube videos about Port Royal in Jamaica that was sort of the, the piracy capital and so this is what the wealth of South America looked like now I was giving a live virtual tour here and a few people commented that it looked quite poor. Now it isn't all that poor, Panama's doing well for itself. It is dense jungle and jungle just affects everything all the time. But also, it is important to know that the incredible constructions and wealth and beauty that one goes to Spain to visit was all financed from the money extracted from particularly South America and transported over this isthmus. Gradually Portobello, this is the old customs house, but would have been the main trade house. This became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980 and is gradually being restored. That will be lovely to see. But I want to keep this short. I just didn't know when I would get a chance to come back here. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult place to get to just because of the distance. Although Panama itself is not that hard to get to. People are friendly and fun um, and the food is excellent. It's all fresh seafood around here. But there is an inordinate amount of garbage around, which is always so troubling to see. But when all of these different republics gained independence, they did so after having so much of their wealth looted. And it was all looted through here, whomever or however it was looted. 
and in turn enslaved people were brought over here and dispersed throughout the Americas. So it's a it's a heavy bit of history mixed with um, mixed with all sorts of other other realities. But as this fell gradually into less use, it suddenly became important again during the gold rush in California. Because during the gold rush, Americans from the East and people from Europe, of course, couldn't really get across the continent too easily. There was no interstate system. Uh, so they traveled down to here or right around the Southern Cape, crossed over Panama. Um, and so in 1855, a train was built across Panama at the cost of somewhere between five and 10,000 lives. And then in the 1980, or the 1880s, Le Sarre, the French, the Frenchman who built the Suez Canal, came over here and attempted to build a canal. But still, the world didn't understand disease and yellow fever. And over 22,000 workers died as they tried to blast their way between the two oceans. Uh, eventually, a Cuban doctor discovered what yellow fever was. They were able to at least tame it down. And the Americans helped Panama gain its independence in 1903 and then set about building the canal, which was finished 1913 and opened 1914. And that was sort of the end of Portobello as a main route. But can one imagine, now despite the garbage, there's a lovely little egret down in the water right here. Beautiful bird life around. But that is just how significant this place is. So imagine Potosi in Bolivia was the highest city in the world for a long time, up above 4,000 meters, 14,000 feet. And when they found that mountain in Cerro Rico, there was more silver there than the world had ever seen. It is still being mined today, and that silver then established the wealth of Lima, but basically uh, came up the Pacific coast here to Panama, crossed over, and went off to Europe. It's the history of the world as we know it today. And so those of us who live in the Americas, whether we live way up in Yukon or way down in southern Patagonia, if we're not of an indigenous background, then we are somehow a byproduct of these collision of cultures and that interculturation that occurred in this part of the world. Um, and on the back of all the challenging history, there is an intense and beautiful Afro-Panamanian culture through here. And I'm just going to quietly go into there church for a moment and I put my mask on and take my hat off of course and to show you up in the glass case the famous black Jesus here so wherever one sits religiously there is something very moving about that given that so many people of African origin were actually purchased and sold I think of all the stories that touched me the most, as they said in Haiti, which was at one time the richest place in the French Empire because of sugarcane, new enslaved people had to be imported every year because the previous ones would die during harvest. So it is remarkable. But imagine in other terms, as we look out the door here, how important this port was historically and how actually small it was too. So dense, dense, jungle around us at the back here. You will see the old school buses get converted to public transport down here. They're generally built around Drummondville in Quebec and uh, and they get painted up but of course they're made for harsh Canadian winters but actually makes them quite effective here on these tropical roads as well and you can open the windows and get a nice breeze. So I just like to back up and give you a final view of the church but it is remarkable to think that more wealth passed through here than virtually any other place in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. And this is the infrastructure that's left from that. So there we are, but a, a very warm hello from Portobello in Panama. I think there's a lot more that can be written about this place, but it is an honor to get to share it. And if you can make it here ever, so you go through Cologne, follow the signs, kind of bumpy roads, but once you get out here, there are nice beaches, places to eat. I cannot recommend the ceviche enough, of course. Um, so lots to discover. But here's part of the original old royal road that was down through here. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. I just 
want to take this opportunity, but please feel free to subscribe if you can to our channel and uh, join us anytime you want for a lovely live virtual tour. Thank you and warmest regards.